The True Teachings of Jesus Christ It is a known fact that different churches and religious affiliations interpret the life and teachings of Jesus Christ differently. This is a result of the deficiency and inconsistency of information about events that happened thousands of years ago. This is the main cause of perpetual disputes and disagreements within the Christian church. The four Gospels in the New Testament, as time has shown, are unable to cope with this problem. This is a challenge, but it can be resolved. Records of the life of Jesus other than the Gospels are in the Vatican archives, and for many centuries they have been insistently kept from the public. One has the impression that someone is intentionally trying to conceal the truth from the people. The Vatican could put an end to this once and for all by allowing secular and religious scholars to access and evaluate their archives. Today, additional accounts of the life and times of Jesus Christ have been discovered as recently as the past few decades. These priceless documents, which miraculously survived, have enabled the restoration of the true teachings of Jesus Christ without waiting for the Vatican to make its X-Files public. The work of contemporary scholars has today succeeded for the first time ever in piecing together and sequencing in natural order the most authentic statements and purest ideas of Christ. His words resonate with the clarity of divine genius and are made easy to understand. The true teachings of Jesus Christ restored according to the holy scriptures and surviving holy traditions. The least faithful of you are those who pray more than others and think that for that reason there will be more bestowed on them than on others. For they don't acknowledge what they believe in, as if beggars fit for nothing other than praying for fulfillment of their desires. What are you pestering God for? Or do you think he was wrong providing you with what you have and you want to teach him how to put this wrong right? Hence your God is unwise. Why do you call him God then? Why do you trust in him and what for do you worship him? You don't really know what you are bending your knees to. And little is genuine faith in you. I tell you, having little faith is worse than being faithless. For by denying God, you will turn to God. For wherever you go on land, you will eventually face the ocean. But if your faith is weak, you're not going anywhere but merely wobbling. Who do you listen to and who do you worship when you come to the house of God? And who are the most revered people in it? Is it Pharisees or high priests? All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, and worse. For it is neither your bread nor your gold they plunder, but the very life of yours. They draw near to God with their mouth and honor him with their lips, but their heart is far from him. For they are like whitened tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but inwardly are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. For they shut the kingdom of heaven against men, for they themselves do not enter in. And those that are going in, they suffer not to enter. And love to be called rabbi, rabbi by men. But you don't call them rabbi. They are blind guides of the blind. If the blind guides the blind, both will fall into a pit. For centuries they hide the keys to knowledge and substitute them with half-truth which they dress up as the truth, and therefore it is even more dangerous and fearful than lies. God is not far from each one of us, but you ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, engraved by art and design of man. For then you worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. The Most High doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Neither is he served by men's hands, as though he needed anything. Heaven is his throne, and the earth a footstool for his feet. Keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep seeking, and you will find. Keep knocking, and it will be opened to you. 
and your Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. But it is not fake treasures, not the worldly goods you should be asking the Heavenly Father for, just as sinners do, but the only one thing, so that He would make the waves to His kingdom straight, so that you could see the Almighty during your mortal life. For if you don't see God in your life, you will not see Him afterwards either. I desire to give you faith in the very existence of the kingdom of heaven, where everything dwells in eternal joy and bliss, so that this faith would emblaze you with abiding desire to find it and have it. Believing tastes as sweet as an unripe carrot, but experiencing tastes like honey. Thus, not only to believe, but to test yourselves as to the faith, to discover it and behold it. This is what I plead for. And after you have experienced something, believing in it is not necessary. And if your faith would be a mere cripple's crutch, it would be of no use. Whereas I give this crutch to a disabled, not for him to limp his whole earthly life with it, but for him to recover, hence beholding the Holy Spirit and entering God's kingdom during his mortal life. For God's kingdom is here and now, but you have no knowledge of how to enter it. And the heavens I'm speaking of are inward and outward of you, and God's kingdom is in these heavens and no other. And you needn't look hard to find them. And neither will they say, look here or look there, for the kingdom of heaven is within you. And you have no idea of the treasure that lies within you. Yet I marvel at how this great wealth has come to dwell in this poverty. There are some who will in no way taste death until they see the kingdom of God come with power. First, you must come to know yourselves. When you come to know yourselves, then you will become known by God and you will realize that you are the sons of the living Father. And it is through you, as well as his other creatures, that he shows himself, but man is his prime creation. Then why are you holding God back? Reveal him to the world and honor yourselves and your creator. When you will know yourselves, then you will discover your true self, and all the secrets hidden from you will come out into the open. But if you will not know yourselves, you will dwell in poverty, and it is you who are that poverty. If you don't understand the beginning, it is impossible to understand the end, too. Likewise, it is impossible to know what is around you if you do not know what is within you. Then there is no one who is knowing, who is capable of acknowledging the secrets of the Heavenly Father. And do not separate heaven from earth, for it is the continuation of earth. Just as do not separate yourselves from earth, for you are the continuation of it, and the earth continuation of yourselves. That is why I tell you, you are the beginning and the end of all. And when you see this, you will see the kingdom of heaven. Everything that lives and everything that seems lifeless are both invisibly bound, and every single thing is a part of the whole. Woe betide those who create borders on earth and divide men. For there are no borders in heaven, and there shall be none on earth. Truly, I tell you, this division is a source of enmity and discord. Be it border division, languages division, division of faith, all the same. And if man is divided on the inside, this very enmity and darkness will be inside of him, and he will not be at peace. Don't be afraid to deviate when searching for your way. Only the strongest ones are equal to this. God loves those who left the flock more than others, for it is only them who are to find the sacred path. It is not the cattle's fault that they are kept in a fold, for their keeper made the fold for them. Men, though, to his shame, made a kind of thing which no living creature is capable of making. He built up a prison with his own hands and trapped himself inside. And woe is that his children are born inside this prison. They grow up and know no other life than the one of their parents, and they cannot see it, 
because their eyes got blind from the gloom of confinement, and they don't see anyone who's living a different life, and thus they consider their life the only way of existence possible. For if the eyes have never seen light, how would you determine that you are in darkness? Don't lay up treasures for yourself on the earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And if you possess true strength, then all the earthly desires and passions will leave your soul, which has hitherto blazed, pharanthetic and delirious, and all false knowledge and misjudgment will leave as well. A man's life doesn't consist of the abundance of the things he possesses. You are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, so that the word of God, just as a seed, would take root in you and bear fruit. Truly, I tell you, whoever believes that the all itself is deficient is completely deficient himself. And do not justify yourselves with the fulfillment of the law. It is given for those who have little faith because his word finds no place in them to ensure them from transgressions till they behold the true understanding. The commandments are given to those who by hearing will hear and will in no way understand. Seeing, they will see and will in no way perceive. For the making of the law cannot make alive and does not bring grace and doesn't make you a saint. Only true faith is capable of that, acting with love. The only commandment I give you is love. On this commandment hang all the laws and all the prophets, and all the other commandments are its children, and this, the mother. And if the mother is in you, then all her children are in you. And there's no need knowing them by the names. When they dwell within you, they are the very essence of you. I tell you, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So don't be God-fearing, but God-loving. For God loved you before, so you love God with a pure love that has no fear. For perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He who fears is not made perfect in love. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. For if you do not love your neighbor, but say that you love God, you are lying. Even if you are the first saint on earth and live according to the laws of God and speak the language of the angels and have all the knowledge and all the faith, but no love, and if you are hiding anger towards even an insignificant worm, then you are just a sounding brass and there is no benefit to your soul. All the good deeds are the outer light of man, but it doesn't brighten the way to the kingdom of heaven. But there is light within a man of light, and it lights up the whole world. If it does not shine, it's darkness. And even if you dole out all your goods to feed the poor, and if you give your body to be burned, but don't have love, it profits you nothing. You are the children of love, born by love. Is it not you who shall become love? And being the love means being equal to God, being God himself. For love is God. And there is no other way into the kingdom of heaven. With men this is impossible. But with God all things are possible. To you, whom I address the word of God, I call gods. The same is said in the holy scriptures. Truly. You are all gods, but your eyes are closed and you are not yet awake to get your glory. And if love is in you, then God will also be in you and you will be in God. Perfect love and the Holy Spirit come together, for they are one. If love is in you, then the Holy Spirit is also in you. If the Holy Spirit is in you, your love is perfect. Be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Light that will guide you, you will find within yourself. And even if the gospel pages would be lost, 
you will be able to recover them from your heart. 